ready, but you know, welcome, welcome all of you to uh, this morning's uh, meeting. Uh, we we do anticipate having a, a pretty brief um, meeting agenda the, today. There's a couple of action items and some quick updates, but um, well, we do uh, expect to give you back some time uh, this morning so that. Uh, you can get your weekend started, um, hopefully sooner as you make your way through your workday. Uh, good morning, Vu. Welcome. Nice to see you, Vu. And uh, Natalie, I see you're on here. Sokolin, uh, good morning, Scott. Uh, feel free to continue to um, introduce yourself in the chat with your name and morning. affiliation. Good morning. And let us know where you're dialing in from. Um, so with that, I will move us into agenda item number two. And this is a uh, time that we always make available on uh, our meeting agendas for members of the public who are not formally part of the collaborative to uh, come off mute or raise their hand, uh, drop a question in the chat for uh, us to share with the, uh, the leadership of this collaborative. And so if there's anyone that's interested in uh, sharing uh, comments or uh, offering some quick uh, suggestions or uh, now is the time to do so. So I will give it a few seconds to see if there's anybody raising their hand, anybody coming off mute, or if there's anything in the chat that looks like a comment or a question. I will take a look now. And I am not seeing anything on my end. Jesse, anything on your end? Nothing in the attendee view. Okay. Uh, so just give it 15 more seconds here. Excellent. Your hand. While we do that, I want to want to welcome Jesse back. He's uh, physically back in Orange County, although virtually he never left. Um, he had a chance to take a little bit of a breather with his family, but uh, you know, as diligent as he is, was still working. Um, so welcome back, Jesse. Good to have you. Jewish. Then I know I think we're good. We can move on to the next item. Very good. So we'll uh, move into agenda item number three. And this is the opportunity on the agenda for those of you on the collaborative who are formal member formal members of this collaborative to come off mute, <clears throat> offer any questions, suggestions, concerns, or just comments and feedback related to our our initiative, the process, the agenda today. Um, so I will open the floor to anybody who wants to raise their hand, come off mute, or offer any comments in in the chat. Um, we'll give it a few moments here for any of you. Okay, no one is indicating a, um, and, um, maybe I'll also add if any of you have upcoming events or, um, you know, updates in, in the community that you want to share with or with folks, that's also fair game to uh, share that with your colleagues here. So if anybody has any noteworthy developments that your organization or your community is bringing forth, feel free to come off mute and share that with the rest of the group and uh, invite the rest of us to take part in whatever you've got coming up. All right. I am not seeing any hands up or any comments. So we will move into our ne next agenda item, which is agenda item number five. We're actually going to go out of order here a little bit. We are. Um, Ish, sorry, Dr. Dr. Rod just joined. So I think he we just joined. Oh, perfect. Yeah, All right. Waiting. So we will stay with agenda item number four then. Uh, welcome, Dr. Walrod. Good morning. Uh, um, let me just tee up a couple comments before I turn it over to Dr. Walrod. Uh, right on cue. Uh, so, you know, to finalize the, the planning phase of this initiative and, and the hard work that um, the staff team uh, has been doing with this process on uh, regional plan part two and, and one, and, and all the, the input and comments that, and feedback that we've been receiving from many of you over the last few months uh, at the different iterations of uh, feedback windows. Um, you know, we have our deadline to meet by the end of this month, and the state requires us to uh, complete the second part of the regional plan, which, you know, we've uh, had a checkpoint on uh, two weeks ago and have been, you know, had some office hours and Many of you have taken advantage of the feedback window to provide uh, edits and feedback. So thank you for doing that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we we are in the, in the process today to uh, take formal action on approving this second plan. And um, while um, this is not a request for final approval of the plan, I just want to uh, differentiate 
it's not a it's not a request to approve a final version of this plan it's it's more a request to, uh, to uh, approve the submission of this version to the state right so we're not letting the the perfect get in the way of the good we here we need to submit something to the state buenos dias, buenos dias señora polonia uh, and as we've said many times this is a living document uh, it, it's it's intended to have uh, iterations but something needs to be submitted to the state so today's action item is a vote to submit the current version to the state and not to approve a final version of this plan. And so we expect feedback from the state uh, after um, today's vote and submission. Um, and we'll, you know, naturally that the staff team will open up the opportunity for further comments from all of you here on the collaborative to be included um, when we start addressing feedback from the state um, after, after, after the, the submission by the end of the month. And so with that, I'll just um, hand it over to Dr. Walra to go over some of the uh, the high level edits and fine, um, uh, modifications that have been made over the last couple of weeks since we last met. And um, and then we'll entertain, um, uh, you know, an action through a motion and second once uh, his comments are included. So Dr. Walra, let's turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Ish. The perfect setup. Thank you. Um, excellent job. Good morning, everybody. And I did want to kind of echo um, what Ish said, that we view this as a living, breathing document, even after we get feedback from the state and, um, you know, incorporate that. There's still another multiple bites at the apple to improve the document. But yeah, um, just thought I'd run through. We had a good office hour, got a lot of good feedback, just run through the changes that we made from the previous version that you saw. So just go by pages. Um, hopefully I have these in order. On uh, page 14 to 18, we changed the Native American label to American Indian and Alaska Native per uh, the data source. Page 22, we added some content on women owned small businesses. Um, uh, we also included there uh, um, a couple sentences referring back to regional plan part one. Uh, because this is, they're, they're really one document, uh, plan uh, the part one and part two. Um, page 30, we included um, information on the groundwater replenishment system, um, uh, which is uh, an amazing resource that Orange County has and what puts Orange County's water infrastructure probably at the top of the state and nation. Talked a little bit about the new desal plant. Throughout, we formatted titles, title font sizes for readability. We included information on Cielo and Cooperacion. Uh, page 58, we included clarification for American Indian and Alaska Native data not being available for, for that data set. Page 64, we added content on green technology adoption. 72, we added some information on the Cal State Fullerton Center for Family Business. 77, page 77, we added text for additional uh, business management courses. Page 79, we added some content on supply chain impact on small businesses. 83, we added um, hyperlinks and identified related programs. 86, um, we identified some content on education and services and encouraging academic institutions to have their own climate resiliency plans. 86 also under construction, we added some content about incentivizing electric buildings. 87 as well, 87 under an accommodation, we added some content about adding housing near hotels so that workers can afford to live nearby and avoid commuting. Also in 87, we added text on promoting electric products and facilities to improve working conditions. Uh, 94, we added text on allowing unique spaces for unique needs for respectful cultural engagement. 96, we added more examples of business support organizations. That was the Cielo and Cooperacion. Uh, 129, I'm sorry, back to 93, we actually um, put in some content about um, small business, worker ownership, entrepreneurship, um, and how that's... Um, was hampered by COVID and has rebounded after the pandemic. On 129, we added nonprofits and businesses to a bullet point on strategy four. And then on 130, we also added additional text on small business. So I think that 
pretty much covers what um, the additions were um, and happy to entertain any questions or comments. Great, thank you, Dr. Walron. Any questions or comments on any of those edits that were just outlined? Linda, I see you came off mute. Uh, would you like to add something? Yeah, I, actually it's more of a question-ish, which is, um, Dr. Walron, we talk about this uh, being a living, breathing document, which is completely, <laughs> completely understandable. Uh, question is though, is will we use a similar process that, in other words, it, because it's a living, breathing document, this will be brought back to the group to review? Or are there certain people that are going to be influencing and moving forward? Or that's what that's what I'm curious about. Yeah, I think maybe we will bring it back periodically. Uh, I think probably the the way in which the document will change going forward is what we as a group learn during the catalyst mm -hmm. phase. So I'm sure there will be some learnings and some strategies that come out of as we get into helping, you know, pre-development activities with projects, seeing what kind of projects are brought forward. Um, there could be some additional content or a shift in emphasis based upon what those projects look like and what their sort of pathway is going forward. Um, so that would be the main um the main way I think in which we'll probably uh, continue to modify the document. It's always open for suggestions and we'll, we will do that uh, at collaborative meetings. Um, so that that will be the, the course forward that I see. Thank you for that, Luna, appreciate it. Other comments or questions from the collaborative? Pregunta sobre las modificaciones que acaba de explicar el Dr. Warwar. Okay, I've not seen any in the chat either. Uh, uh, I'd like to comment. Oh, go ahead, Luis. Adelante. Thank you. Um, yeah, just um, so I was only able to attend the last few minutes of the office hours, and uh, thank you for um uh, for that opportunity to kind of just touch base. Um, I want to share in this space what you know what um thrives kind of uh um feedback was and that just um we we feel like we still have a good ways to go to really make sure that our plan is benefiting disinvested communities and appreciate some of the changes that were made um glad to see that the inclusion of cielo and cooperación santana is a good example of including strategies that we know are directly working with disinvested communities. Um, I think that we could do a little bit more, um, but we, on this round, we didn't have the time or capacity to provide feedback as, as much as we'd like. So we will be providing feedback, uh, but, you know, moving forward um, and, um, whatever that process might be, um, I think that, that we should make sure, like we've been trying to do throughout the whole process, to really center the voices of disinvested communities. Uh, and um, yeah, so glad to hear that we'll have an opportunity to do that. And uh, oh, there was one other, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, uh, I can't recall my my last point, but but just that and um and um oh yeah and well I my last point was that we're supportive of of sending the document uh to the state um in order to meet the the deadline that we need to meet. Great, thank thank you, Luis. Appreciate that. And I do see a hand up from Teresa, and then uh, Linda. I think you came off mute, so let me go to Teresa first, and then we'll go to Lin back to Linda. Go ahead, Teresa. I was part of that, uh, the office hours as well. And I just, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. I was really impressed with obviously the time that everyone put into literally going line by line through that. So um, I appreciated all the, the effort that even before the office hours that people had put in to go through everything. So thank you. Thanks, Teresa. 
Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Want to commend Dr. Wara out of the entire research team for. I should have done that. You're doing my job for me there. Ish. We had a really super um, team uh, uh, that put together the document, including California Forward. So kudos to all all the um, the team that put that together. Great, thank you, Linda. Let me turn to you. I think you were next on our. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's um. Thank you, Luis, for uh, for sharing your perspective. And with all, you know, truly, truly, with all due respect, this is why I raised the question I did before, which is because um, I know that you and your organization are going to continue to be greatly involved in this, rightfully so. Uh, and we are all dedicated to focusing on projects that advance disinvested communities. That being said, when an organization on our collaborative comes forward with changes that they would like to be considered moving forward on this living, breathing document, that's why I'm asking the question, do they just get inserted because that organization feels compelled you know, to, to share it or because they they want it? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why I asked the question about the due process, if you will, that we may are we may likely, as a collaborative, you know, be 99.9 percent .9 comfortable with the change that's or the addition that's being proposed. Um, but that's why I was asking. Yeah, Linda, we appreciate that, and um, I think probably um, in the spirit of that, probably what the um, best process would be is anybody who is um, wanting additional changes to the document submits those in writing and we share those directly with the collaborative and at the next collaborative meeting we can have a good discussion about those I think that's the best process to accomplish that I think we're all very well served by that because I think there's going to be some some terrific additions and changes uh, that need to be made, but I do think we all need to be alerted to them. Thank you. Great, you bet. Thank you for the extra discussion here. Um, other questions or comments on on uh, the feedback that uh, we just outlined, or you know, some of the next steps with uh, with the document. Otherwise, I will entertain. Uh, a motion to um, approve the submission of this version uh, to the state in order to meet the deadline of uh, August 31st uh, for, the, for the collaborative. Uh, is there a motion? I see a hand up from Linda. Linda, are you making the motion? Okay, motion from Linda. Is there a second? Pepper, I see your hand went up. We have a motion and a second on the floor uh, to approve the submission of uh, um, the current draft. Uh, Apolonio tenía una pregunta o quería hacer un comentario? No, es, nada más estoy de acuerdo, no sé. Ok, qué bueno. Ahorita vamos a, a tomar la acción aquí de votar. Uh, gracias. Ok, okay. Uh, so motion and, and second have been uh, issued for approval of submission of this current draft, the regional plan part two. Uh, all those in favor? Los que estén de acuerdo para um, entregar esta versión del documento para el Estado, um, indicate by uh, saying aye or thumbs up or yes in the chat. Uh, indiquen su, uh, uh, su votación aquí con un sí en el, en el chat o un, una manita con el dedo para arriba o, o prendan el micrófono y indiquen sí. Give that a couple of seconds to come through. Okay, and then if there's any um, opposition to submission, uh, please come off uh, mute and indicate your opposition. Not seeing any opposition. Uh, any abstentions? Abstenciones que uno de ustedes guste, guste tomar a esta posición? Okay. No, think... quiero... Oh, okay. Así, adelante. Yo puse así. Estoy de acuerdo. Este, no sé si llegó, puse una manita, no sé si llegó. Sí, sí la miré, gracias a Polonio. Okay. Well, Polonio no, is indicating his support to approve the measure. So, um, gracias. Uh, with that, I think we have a unanimous uh, 
um, approval of, of the action item to uh, approve submission to the state. So felicidades. Uh, I, it seems like a small thing, but it's actually a very big thing that you just approve. Uh, many regions are are uh, scrambling to um, get to this deadline uh, with the with the quality product and the fact that you are you know doing this ahead of schedule uh, with the tremendous amount of opportunity for input. Um, I think is commendable. So a big pat on the back to yourselves and a round of applause for taking this uh, important step in your process. So felicidades, no small, no small feat. Uh, okay, well with that, uh, we're gonna turn to agenda item <clears throat> uh, five. And agenda item five is uh, related to, uh, to four, agenda item four, but I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse to walk us through this action item. Uh, which is approval of the updates um, that have been made to regional plan part one, um, uh, which we discussed, I think, a couple of weeks ago. So, Jesse, let me turn to you to uh, uh, tee up this, this action item. And then uh, once Jesse's completed, we'll entertain some comments, discussion, and, uh, and then uh, move to uh, a motion in a second to approve the agenda item. Jesse? Thanks, Ish. Uh, this is a carryover of the last meeting. Uh, there were some comments from the collaborative that, uh, again, there's you're, you're trying to review two documents, two very lengthy documents, and that, you know, getting something on Monday for something on Friday was maybe a little bit too soon. So nothing has really changed here. We just allowed two more weeks for people to review this content. Again, this is um, some of these sections that there was approval kind of to Linda's point about what's the process as, as documents are living. Uh, but there were some sections that were added primarily just around the community uh, engagement that was done, both with Thrive Cooperacion um, and um, Cielo and Latino Health Access and some other groups. Uh, I think the Cambodian family, they, they did some direct um, outreach and engagement, plus all the research that you saw or the analysis from uh, Dr. C.J. Bishop. So that's in there. And so you know, kind of to Linda's point, we just highlighted it in red to show you where the changes were so you didn't have to sift through the entire document. Um, and so what we're just trying to do is, again, because you formally approved the document before, uh, we wanted to make sure that before we submit anything new to the state, it's always approved by you first. So here, the sections in red were the ones that were updated. But UCI Labor Center had someone who could do updated research since this research was really done a year ago. Uh, so we tried to just update the doc, update it with with more 2023 or 2024 data. So those are the kind of the things that you see kind of highlighted here. Um, again, just to the process of if we're ever going to submit something to the state. Ultimately, we want your eyes on it and your approval. Or, of course, if there's content that you don't like and you want to debate whether it should be included, that's the, that's why we have this platform as well. So, again, nothing changed from two weeks ago. Just provided more time for people on the collaborative who wanted to review it to review it. But uh, we'd like to update it to the state since they're already requesting the regional plan part two. We thought it'd be a good time to uh, make some of these additions and just include the regional plan part one. Uh, for the state's benefit, and then of course we can upload it to the Jobs First website, um, so it's it's public for people to review as well. So with that, I'll take any questions or comments, and I can I can jump to certain sections if you'd like, or I can stop share. We'll do it to you. Hey Jesse, this is a uh, Yosefa. Sure. Um, I'm sure you and Ish and Dr. Walrod have mentioned this a number of times, but I think because of the density of both of these documents and the mm -hmm. process, which has many layers to it. Can you just in like 30 seconds remind us the purpose of plan part one, purpose sure. of plan part two, and then now that we're submitting plan part two, what happens from here? Again, no. I know you guys have done this many of times, but for a lot of us, it's we're still trying to track all the different pieces. Yeah, totally. No, I, I'm, I'm always happy to answer these questions again. Um, because I, I understand there's always a lot of moving pieces. So this all started with regional plan part one, which as you see is mostly, you know, I would call it hard data, right? It's called research, let's say. And so this, the, the state have, has read this for their, for them to better understand each region, right? So they've, they've read every, they've read Orange counties, they've read LA and all the way. So the whole point is like, these are the things that they wanted in the report. So now they have a better understanding as they try to lead in some economic development fashion what are the important industries of Orange County? What does the labor market look like? Where are there inequities in, in health and, and environment? It's supposed to kind of educate them. Um, and of course, it, I think the, a part of this document, I think for the for this group also was to serve as, you know, 
yes, like Dr. Walrod or people at OCBC, like this is what we live every day, but not necessarily if you're environmental, an environmental group. And for, for someone like OCBC, you know, all that environmental data and all that public health data was new to me, it was probably new to my boss for us to try to make sure that we're informed when we start making some of these decisions. So the, the way that we brought it up to show you sections of it was to almost give you a crash course everyone a crash course because we all came from different places and what we knew and, and did not know. So the state wanted this document. Okay, so now we have the research, we have the hard data. Then the second one is probably a little bit more uh, like qualitative in nature, right? The development of strategy. So knowing what we know, what our top industries are, knowing what we know, what the needs or the strengths that like we're looking at SWAT right here, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What are the strategies we develop? And so that's what you saw in that document. Um, and it's supposed to, I think, probably provide guidance on the things that we want to accomplish. And then, of course, as we think about projects, um, which is the, the phase we're about to embark on, you got to look at this, the regional plan part two. So what you just approved with Dr. Walrod as far as, well, shouldn't those projects match the strategies that we set out? So, right, so you have the hard data, you develop strategies based on the hard data. Now you want to select projects based on the strategies you selected. And so that's the thread. Uh, that's the through line that kind of connects all three pieces of this work. You hope that there is alignment in all these things, and that's why uh, the state wants us to do it kind of in this fashion. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, that does help to illustrate. And I wonder, Jesse and the team, if a simple illustration of that process it could be created uh, just as a reference piece. Because, I mean, just as you described it, I see it as like, First part is landscape, current, you know, what's the current state of the region? Second one is strategically, how do we address um, these inequities or what have you? And then it sounds like the third part now is projects they have to align with those strategies that then address the current state, right? Yeah. So I think that's so we can try to make a graphic or, or a summation of that. But right, I think at a, at a high level, that's exactly why this was done in, I would say, this linear fashion. But happy to do that and we'll bring that up at the next Thank meeting. You. No problem. Great. A great suggestion, uh, Yosefa. And thank you, Jesse, for uh responding to, to the question. Are there other comments or questions uh related to this item? Feel free to drop it in the chat or, or raise your hand or just come off mute and offer your, your comments. And if not, um, I certainly will uh, entertain a motion to approve. Um, if anybody would like to to do that uh, for uh, this part of the agenda. I'll I'll put forward the motion. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Teresa has a motion to approve um, uh, regional plan part one uh, for submission um, uh, back to the state with, with part two, as Jesse indicated. Um, so is there a second for the motion that's on the floor? Yes, I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, for the motion, any comments or discussion on the motion? On the second? Nope. No comments. All right, well, uh, the, all those in favor, todos que estén de acuerdo para proceder con la entrega de la primera parte del plan regional, indiquen con un thumbs up, el dedito para arriba, o pongan en el chat que sí. Uh, o prendan el micrófono y indican oralmente que están de acuerdo para aprobar, someter esta parte del, de, la, de la estrategia. All those in favor, do that now. Give that a few minutes or a few, few moments, rather. <clears throat> Anybody in opposition of submitting regional plan part one? Alguien que esté opuesto a la entrega de esta parte del, del plan? Uh, feel free to indicate that by coming off mute and expressing your opposition. Anybody who would like to abstain on this action item? Alguien que guste abstener su voto y no, no votar? Um, indíquenlo también si prenden su micrófono y indiquen que están absteniendo de, este, de, esta, de esta acción. Okay, I am seeing in the chat and in the thumbs up that I saw a few moments ago, a unanimous approval of the action item to um, submit regional plan part one as well. So. Uh, congrats again to all of you for, again, no no small feat in uh, an iter iterative process to uh, get to uh, the finish line on that piece of the work and um, 
uh, again, uh, thank you for all the feedback and uh, comments and edits that well, were taken into account and um, embedded into that part of the document. And uh, to the research team, Dr. Walrod, again, for also the, the hard work on um, <clears throat> uh, refining part one of the plan. And so the state will now have part one and part two uh, from Orange County, and um, you all would have will have successfully met your deadline. So congratulations. Okay, well, with that, um, I am happy to report that we are at adjournment of our meeting. Uh, as I started off uh, at 8.30, um, you know, uh, gave you a heads up that this would be an abbreviated meeting, a short, a short agenda. So we will happily give you back an hour of your time. But before we do that, I wanna just give you an important reminder uh, about the jo uh, Jobs First Regional Investment initiative form you all should have received communications from the ocbc team about that in-person event um, that will really uh, give us an opportunity to provide an update to uh, um, every and all who want to participate from from the orange county community um, to learn about where the current status of the project is the achievements that have been accomplished today such as today's actions uh, those are great uh, developments to share with the community um, and that event will be taking place on September 24th uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, it'll be held and uh, graciously hosted at Santa Ana College. And we hope that all of you um, have the ability uh, to attend and uh, speak on behalf and make comments as, as, um, as possible on your participation on this collaborative to a broader set of the community. And so we encourage you to not just attend yourself, but also help us disseminate uh, information around that event to your networks and members of the communities that you all represent. And um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you all once again in person. And um, there will be another opportunity for the staff to circulate another reminder around the event. So when you see that, uh, please help us uh, pass that on to, to colleagues and friends in Orange County. And if you have any questions about the event, um, you're always certainly welcome to reach out uh, to Maria or any one of us uh, about that event or any part of this process. Uh, but just want to say thank you again for your your time this morning, uh, uh, your, your ongoing commitment, your uh, leaning in to the last few months that have been, you know, um, you know, heavy with a lot of content to consider, a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of important steps. But um, you all have done a tremendous job of really making uh, yourselves open to um, input and process, you know, uh, being uh, having a little bit of insight to other regions. I just want to commend you all for being, uh, you know, ahead of the pack and ahead of the curve and in, in, uh, the work that you've been doing collectively. And so uh, congrats to all of you. And um, the, 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 the other thing I'll mention is, um, you know, uh, we will be sending a, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, in October, uh, we'll start um, scheduling meetings to uh, determine um, which projects this collaborative wants to recommend to the state for uh, implementation funding. That's the the second phase of the 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 statewide effort, and if possible, you know, start working through you know which activities this collaborative will want to see um, funded through. Uh, the $9 million that have become available to your county uh, with catalyst funding. And so those are conversations that are forthcoming. And um, and then the, uh, you know, the state will be releasing uh, uh, another communication re related to some of this uh, uh, next phase of funding uh, pretty soon. And so um, there'll be a, a meeting uh, invite for September 20th of uh, for for folks to uh, want to come and learn more about that the the ocbc team uh, will be sharing more information about that data um, uh, re regarding the state's activities with the next phase of funding but uh, all to say that you know you've you've carried a lot to the finish line uh, by the deadline that you were given and uh, there'll be communications in the coming months around the next phases of this initiative uh, both catalyst and implementation and so just keep an eye out for your email for uh, when those states become available. Uh, Maria just dropped in the chat um, the information related to um, the Orange County Community Forum that I mentioned earlier for September 24th. So 
uh, please open that link, uh, register yourself and your colleagues, and um, please help us share that uh, uh, throughout your county. And lastly, um, um, I will put a, oh, I see a couple hands up. Actually, let me stop and take a couple questions from Maria. Uh, I'm sorry, Linda, uh, Anna, and then we'll go to Teresa. Go ahead, Linda. Thank you, Ish. Uh, yeah, and thanks everyone uh, for, for, for this incredible project and work. A um, couple of uh, questions. One is because we have in our possession and access to a tsunami of documents and research and so forth, may I ask that the regional part one and the regional part two that we just approved um, be available to us just in, in a single link so we can just go to them and have access to them for our colleagues and friends. I'd appreciate that. Um, the second thing is, um, could uh, from Jesse and Maria, could we have the timeline moving forward that's just called out for us, just as 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 clearly as you can make it available, so that we know what to expect again, so we can respond to our constituencies and and colleagues. Thank you. Yeah, Linda. Um, so the second part. Yes, the biggest question mark is when the state will drop the regional investment initiative implementation SFP. Um, I don't know, Maria, I know you've had conversations with some of the state staff if they've given a specific date, maybe they haven't. It's supposed to be just sometime in September, hence why we just put we're going to probably have a meeting on hold for the for September 20th in the hopes that it's out and we can try to discuss it and try to wrap our arms around it. Uh, but that's probably the biggest thing that will determine the timeline is when does that SFP get released? And when is the due date for regions to submit, right, their letters of support for preferred projects or identify what the preferred projects are? I don't have those, Maria, but I don't know if you've had more recent conversations. Um, we can try to probably do something around Catalyst a little bit better for you, Linda, but it's that's the biggest question mark is when does that drop and what's the window to actually submit ap applications for? I don't have the answer to that when I had my most recent conversation with them a little less than two weeks ago. But again, Maria, I'm not sure if you've had a more recent update since then. Yeah, it's the same thing, Jesse. Um, there's They have internal changes going on, um, Linda. So I've kind of just been waiting on them. And I did request that from them. Um, and then always send me any templates that are helpful to the collaborative members. So they don't really have templates even that you know they can share with us. Um, but they are having meetings internally discussing possible changes to some of the original due dates that they had for um, the region. So, for example, we had some due dates as staff that we were supposed to submit certain things coming up in the next few months. Uh, they're discussing possible changes and extensions. So I do want to create the graphic because I am a visual learner, so I wouldn't physically create it myself, but we would definitely have somebody support us with that. Um, if you go to, and I'll put it on in the chat, but if you go to our OCBC website, the most recent one that um, we created is the Jobs First Collaborative Timeline. So that is going to change. And as soon as it does, I will update it. Uh, but I per probably could have done a better job at sharing it with all of you, you know, making sure that you all saw that, not we don't all go to the website every day. Um, but if you go towards like almost the middle of the page, there's there's something there, like a timeline. Mm -hmm. But I'll be working closely with the state on that. Thank you, Maria. I missed that. So I appreciate that. Yeah, just anything that I can put on, uh, put right in front of my face so I don't miss anything. Thank you very much. No, no, that's great. Yeah. And also, uh, Natalie and I are working together also on creating timeline for documents we're supposed to submit. So maybe her and I can get creative. Um, Natalie from Charitable Ventures, who's our fiscal agent, and then um, with that creativity, something amazing comes out and we can share it with all of you. And then um, OCG just posted something in the chat too. So in October, I'll also be presenting um, at their summit. So I highly recommend that you all register and attend and share it because there will be a lot of updates around jobs first. Sorry, Ish, I took over the mic. <laughs> no, 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 not a problem at all. Good, good updates. Uh, I do want to turn it to Anna, who had her hand up as well. Go ahead, Anna. Hi, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I, my question was uh, similar to Linda's about, um, yeah, just what comes next. Um, and specifically, you sent over the rubric, and I was late this morning. I don't know if that was already reviewed or what the next steps are for the rubric. 
Yeah, so that I think because yeah. uh, you saw one of my offers was for office hours, I'd like those office hours to happen with any co interested collaborative members. So if people want to do an office hours like you did for the Regional Part 2, please let me know your availability. So I, And I wanted that to happen before I do some sort of markup in red or parentheses of what that feedback was. I know like, Luis, I know you provided some in writing. If other like the office hours approach, please let me know when you'd be available next week and I will schedule it uh, with with the, the with the where the majority or the most or the, the most number of participants can participate or maybe i'll even host several to try to come to everyone's schedule before we present that again i think that also lines up with we got to know uh, when when the regional plan oh sorry, sorry sorry when the implementation sfp is out and whether the guidance they gave us back in february is still 100 percent accurate or whether even the state has made changes because so much of that draft um was is based upon the most recent guidance it doesn't mean it was the final guidance so we might have to be open up to changes there it's just the nature of do we just wait for the state before we do anything or do we try to build something up and get as close as we can knowing we're gonna have to make pivots i've always erred towards the latter so we're just not caught flat-footed and having to rush so um, those are come some of the reasons why we will definitely review the implementation uh scoring rubric um, at a later date, but those are some of the things that are kind of holding it up before we can finalize it on that. But broadly Thank speaking, you. to the Linda's point, like there's just so, I mean, I, I just to get maybe too much information, but I think there's been a lot of pressure from the union saying, we have, to, we have to do our regional plan part two, you want us to roll out Catalyst and then you're gonna drop an SFP on us to submit projects. That's a lot to do. Um, so I think the state is trying to be receptive but in that, then it just opens up more question marks of are they going to make changes? And if they are, what those are, which in Orange County, because I think we kind of we do have it held together pretty well. It's a lot of wait and see at times. That's why we haven't been clear as a, like as OCBC to all of you what we expect the next few months to look like, because there's just big things looming that we don't know if the state wants to make changes. So it's less burdensome, but we don't know if they can or will. Yeah, thank you for that. I think even just having the list of things we're waiting for and like what would come before or after that, even if we don't have dates, it could just be a helpful visual. Okay, 100%. Great. Thank you, Anna and Jesse for that. Uh, and then I see uh, Teresa and then we'll go to Luis. Teresa? Yeah, just real quick, I wanted to ask about the event on the 24th. I know uh, two things. Um, I know that um, in the invitation, I already registered for it. And in the invitation, it said that you might need to drop people off um, if it gets too crowded. So I just wanted to put it out there. You know, I don't know if you're dropping people that are attending the event or more of us. So I I'm happy to drop off if you needed somebody to drop off because you, you have other people that needed to be there. Um, but the second question is, as we're promoting it, our I didn't quite understand. Am I should I be promoting it to uh, fellow people that are working in this industry or to our clients? What type of people are you looking to be at that event? Um, I think both. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Like I think we the the big part the point of it is that all of you would put in so much work. You have these deliverables. Now let's communicate it to organize, you know, the community, the region around uh, where they can participate, especially as we start thinking about the possible projects. So uh, I know that we, we, we've done outreach and engagement with residents directly who've said they want to know more about this initiative. And like, so they've, I believe, already re received this invite. So it's it can be grass top organizations like yourselves or, or very much residents. We also, so part of to your first point of some people may not, uh, we, if we meet capacity, how we can we might have to offload people. It's because much like this group, we also want the attendance to be blended and right. not really dominated by one industry or sector. So we'll and obviously residents is a big uh, an important portion of that. So we'll just have to kind of make those calculations. It's just the trade off of a free event with limited capacity at some point. Okay, uh, and yeah. then will we um, as far as so if we start inviting our uh, clients, will there be translations? Yeah, we'll have translation services. I think we're trying we're we're on daycare. Um, right. So we will try to provide as many wraparound services to kind of make it uh, obviously to be inclusive for sure. Okay. If in it, there's a possibility in Maria or whoever is in charge of this, um, we might have volunteers that would uh, volunteer to do the daycare section of it. So let me know if you need need some help with that. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Teresa. 
Yeah. Luis, let's turn to you next, Luis. Thank you. Um, I just uh, was thinking a little bit about um, the the comment that uh, Linda made earlier about process um, in you know in making edits to the uh, the regional plan part two and just in general. I think I think it's a it's a an important que an important question that I would be happy for us to come back to um, about process. One thing that comes to mind is that as a collaborative, I think that we're all here because of different areas of expertise. And one thing that we can also, you know, I think um, rely on our facilitators to help us leverage those different areas of expertise. Um, you know, um, some collaborative members have, you know, their expertise in environmental work so we have you know academic institutions we have labor we have um some um I, i'm i'm not as familiar with the you know the area of octane linda my understanding is you you have been doing economic development work for a long time i believe um I, at least you you seem to have a, a good understanding or familiarity with the just economic development in our region. Um, I know that some of our organizations have that expertise of working alongside and in, in participative planning processes with disinvested communities. And so I would like to offer that that is lifted up as an area of expertise in our collective planning process um, as we develop these um, decision-making processes and um, in, in terms of how we're setting forth our, our collective plan for the region. So, thank you. Thank you, Luis. Any other uh, comments or, or questions or announcements any of you would like to make before we sign off here today? And I, and I I just want to share, I invite all of you to uh, consider um, attending uh, California Forward's Economic Summit. I dropped some information in the chat for you all to take a look at. We have our early bird registration through August 31st. We would love to have a, a contingency of our Orange County uh, partners and friends there to take part in these statewide activities. So uh, reach out if you have any questions or you know, we can help with uh, helping you uh, participate and be there. But uh, any other questions or comments from the group for the good of the order uh, anyone would like to share? Otherwise, uh, I wish you all a great rest of your day and a great weekend. And um, uh, we will be in touch soon via communications uh, through email and, and elsewhere. Um, have a great uh, rest of your day, everybody. Be safe out there.